In this video, we're going to talk about working with translucent materials using uh, mediums and the specular material. And for this video, I'm using the Cantina.C4D scene, and I've just kind of zoomed in on the bar here on some of the glassware. And so let's take a look at some of these materials here. So I'm using a specular material. So I'm going to go into materials, node editor, and let's select that yellow glass material. All right. So one way to create translucent effects is to simply take a specular material and increase its roughness. That's kind of the easy way to do it. Uh, but you get a very kind of plastic kind of look to it. So if I select the material here and go into the roughness settings and I'm going to set this and I'm just going to increase this float value just a little bit. And you'll see that we're going to get kind of a frosted glass effect on the surface right here. You can see it in the preview as well. And it, the more I increase it, the more we blur the refractions and we get this kind of frosted look to it. Of course, it's also going to affect the uh, highlights here on the surface. So let's bring it way up. So here we get kind of like a plastic translucency. So let's take a look at the red glass material. And instead of increasing the roughness, I'm going to add a medium to it. So uh, we can go down here towards the bottom and I'm going to add an absorption medium. And we'll just plug this directly into the medium input. And you can see it kind of goes black almost immediately because the light is being absorbed as it goes through the surface. So this controls what colors are absorbed by the material. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a color. Scroll up here and add RGB spectrum. And I'm going to plug this into absorption. So right now it's kind of set to white. So we're kind of seeing the light is getting through there a little bit. The transmission on this surface is a red color. So if we go to transmission, we get this red color. So what I'm going to do is go to the absorption medium and lower the density. So bring down the density and you can see now the light has an easier time going through the surface. It kind of looks a bit like it did before. We can play with the uh, density here and you can see how it's kind of, it's creating a sort of a thickness as light is bouncing around in there, but it's not affecting the specular highlight like it would if I was increasing the roughness. Um, we can control kind of the quality by adjusting the volume step length. So the lower this is, the higher the quality. So I'm going to bring up the density a bit more. Let's bring it up to, let's type in a value. Let's say, I think the default is 100. So let's see what happens when I type in 10. So now you can see, eh, let's do a little bit higher. Let's do 50. So now you can see how the wavelengths of light are being absorbed by the surface and it gives us this kind of interior thickness to it. So it's a bit different than it was before when it was just simply a transparent surface. It's like there's a core of darkness in here. Set it up to 80. It's even darker. Now the invert absorption is checked on by default. What this basically means is, I'm gonna make this a bit more obvious. So let's go to the red glass. I'm gonna to go to the transmission settings and set this to white. So now it's a colorless glass. And then I'm gonna to go to the absorption, to that color that we plugged into the absorption, and I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna raise the saturation and make it kind of reddish. So what's going on is all the wavelengths of light are going through the surface except for red, which is being absorbed. Now, logically, if the red wavelength is being absorbed, then you wouldn't expect the glass to look red. You would be the opposite of red, right? Because red wavelengths are being absorbed. So this is why we have invert absorption on. Of course, we've got kind of an orange now, but you get the idea. So invert absorption is on by default just to make things a bit more intuitive, because if I turn this off, then you get the more physically accurate um, version of the model, which in which case, if this color is being absorbed, then what we see is the opposite of that color. 
But that's not always terribly intuitive when you're trying to color the glass, so this is why we have the invert absorption option. Now the absorption medium is fairly simple. We just have density, volume, step length, and uh, the color for the absorption. If I go down here, I'm going to create a scattering medium, which is a bit more complex and allows you to create different types of uh, translucent surfaces as well as subsurface scattering because that is a scattering option. So I'm going to plug this into medium and let's make a couple colors here. I'm going to expand this a little bit. So I'll go back up here and let's create RGB spectrum. Let's create two of them. Plug this into absorption and then also into scattering. So now we have a white light going to both absorption and scattering. We also have our density slider. So let's set this down to like 50. And then we also have our volume step length, just like with the absorption node. So scattering controls the wavelengths of light that are bouncing around inside the surface. And you can see it takes a little bit longer to render, but we get a very nice kind of translucent quality to it. The next most important setting is the phase. So this controls whether it, you're getting a forward scattering or back scattering. So if I move this into the positive values, then you're going to get more of a forward scattering effect. You get more of the scattering effect on the side of the surface that's closer to the camera. If I move this to a negative value, we're going to get more of a backscattering effect. And this can have a dramatic effect on the look of the surface that you're trying to create. So I'm going to select the scattering medium. Let's bring the density down a bit. Now you get kind of this kind of look to it, which is really interesting. And of course, we can also color the scattering as well as the absorption. So if I color the scattering, I'm going to increase the saturation, put this right around yellow and then bring the value down. Let's bring the saturation up a bit. Let's make it a little bit different color because it's too much like the light. And I'm gonna go in here and maybe increase the density. So we're getting very interesting looking glass here. I don't know how realistic it is, but it is odd at the very least. And of course we can also go back into the specular node, go down to the, um, go to the roughness settings and increase the roughness as well. So you, there's no reason why you can't combine the effect of increasing the roughness as well as a medium node. So you can see the result is kind of a nice frosted glass look with a little bit of a purple tint to it. And of course, you can also add things like um, procedural texture or texture maps to absorption, scattering, and roughness to create a wide variety of, of really interesting looking surfaces.